another sold out crowd at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex should come as no surprise. It's expansion side Reno that's drawing fans through the turnstiles. The expansion side looks for their first win while Phoenix looks for three in a row. Hello everybody, Mike Watts joined by the former MLS attacking midfielder Albert Munoz. And the crowd is excited for this one as this group uh, enters the field with tremendous expectation. And while Didier Drogba is not in the 18 this evening, fans have come out in force for a lineup that has produced goals consistently over the last few games. Let's take a look at some players to watch in this one, Albert. And we begin with Dane Kelly. If you're starting a franchise from scratch, wouldn't you like to start with the league's all-time leading goal scorer? Yes, Mike. Pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to see Dane Kelly here uh, as a Jamaican striker. Uh, so many goals from the USL. I mean, so much experience he's bringing to the table. Uh, he's going to be an integral part of this attack for F uh, Reno tonight. On the other side, great goal scorer for Reno, great creator for Phoenix. Luke Rooney has had a monstrous couple of weeks. Attacking midfielder, he's going to come in, the Englishman. A lot of experience. He's going to link up with a Bravo and a Cortez who are on fire. Um, exceptional trifecta. It's going to be interesting to see him play tonight. Rooney, a goal and an assist last time out at the top of a 4-4-2 diamond. Let's take a look at the starting lineups, and we begin with Reno. They make three changes from last time out. What do you like? Well, I like the fact that they're 4-4-2. The traditional tactical lineup here is going to be connected between Wigan, uh, Kelly, and Brown up top. Uh, Legrasse is going to do a lot of midfielder work, um, so it's going to be exceptional uh, classic style here. Reno coming off a heart-wrenching 2-2 draw against Colorado Springs and a bye week. For Phoenix, also off a bye week and with a new coach, only one change. It was required. Cody Wakasa out with a red card. AJ Gray slots in. Yeah, everyone else comes in, obviously, getting to know each other. Uh, Sean Wright, um, obviously, a lot of experience with Omar Bravo up top. Chris Cortez, Luke Ro Rooney, I mean, a lot of experience coming together. For Phoenix, they come off a 4-3 win over Swope Park where they led 4-0 after 50 minutes. Blink and you'll miss it. Phoenix offense. Reno looks for its first win. The matchup starts and we meet Luke Rooney when we come back. comfortably together and right now the selection has never been better just look at this three-piece Sonoma chaise sectional only $599 and this urban casual four-piece bedroom just $499 visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street Pruitt's proudly serving the valley for 65 years Rising FC is bringing the highest level of professional soccer to Arizona. And now, Chelsea and Ivory Coast legendary striker Didier Drogba will take us even higher. The new Phoenix Rising Soccer Stadium has sold out every game. So watch Phoenix Rising FC battle OKC Energy FC Saturday, May 13th at 7.30 p.m. Live on Your View Arizona. Phoenix Rising FC, rising as one. Hey, little man, I'm your new house. Come on in. This is going to be great. Watch what we can do together. Lights. Ta-da! Locks. Not bad, huh? Oh, and this. I've been saving this for you. You take care of the universe, I'll take care of you. Cox Home Life. Home security and automation. Phoenix, Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. We're just minutes away from kickoff between Phoenix Rising and Reno 1868. Luke Rooney caught up with our Jose Bosch before the game. Hey guys, we are here with April's Player of the Month midfielder Luke Rooney. Luke, how's it feel to get to such a good start this season? Yeah, uh, fantastic. Uh, obviously the first game, spoke about before, the first game was uh, not ideal, you know, a big build up and uh, I think uh, you know, Frank and Rick both said it, we probably wasn't quite ready. But then I think since then, well, not quite since then, after the Salt Lake game, I feel like, you know, we're, we're putting two great performances that uh, 
you know, warrant, obviously warranted two victories uh, deservedly. And, uh, you know, all, all the boys want to do now is just continue that. Now, I know you, you're a team guy, all team, even though you do very good individual performances. Uh, how does it feel that your individual performances are contributing to the, plays, uh, the team's good play so far? Yeah, of course. I think, uh, first and foremost, you, ha you do have to look at your, uh, your own performance. And then, obviously, if, that, if that's good, then ultimately the team, the team will, uh, it will help the team. And, uh, yeah, I like to think uh, the last two uh, performances in particular, you know, I played, I've, I played uh, very well, and and it, and obviously the team have, have done so too, uh, as well. So it's good. And last question: You guys had a week off last week. How excited are you to get back in front of the home crowd? Yeah, of course. I think uh, no matter what level of football you play, uh, friendly games are not the same as uh, competitive games. No matter how much you build them up, and uh, you know, last week was an, a good little exercise. I think the starters, we, we managed to get a good half an hour, get, got ourselves a little 1-0 lead. And I, I actually enjoyed it myself. I thought we played some nice stuff and uh, continued off from where we you know, where we was the previous two games. But you know, now, it's, now it's back to the real stuff tonight. And you know, the, the atmosphere has been great here so far. And uh, I think it's another sellout. So I can't see why it shouldn't be no different from off the pitch. And hopefully it'll be the same on it. Great. Thank you very much. Good luck tonight. No good luck Thank in the month of much. May. Back to you guys in the booth. Man, myth, legend. I could be talking about Jose Bosch, but no, Luke Rooney. Three goals and an assist after a tremendous finish to the 2016 campaign. He's off to a great start in 2017. For Reno, they looked to Ian Russell in their first season at the helm, played at the University of Washington, played for Frank Yallop in San Jose, previously the interim head coach in San Jose. This is his first shot as the head man for an organization at the professional level. He'll turn to Jackson Ewell, one of the three changes in the lineup for Reno in their now sixth game, as they've come ever so close to reaching that first win. Stoppage time, game time goal for Colorado Springs, sapping all the excitement out of Greater Nevada Field last time out in front of nearly 5,000 fans Colorado Springs took a draw from the jaws of defeat. Mike Watson, Albert Munoz with you, as uh, this really does look like an exciting offensive game. Neither of these teams have struggled to score this year. Well, I mean, it's going to be very tough for them to struggle with these attacking uh, players. You have players like Kelly, who has an abundance of experience. Bravo, who's world-renowned. Um, Cortez, I mean, all these players are going to keep scoring goals in these leagues. Um, with a pitch like this, Mike, I mean, exceptional pitch. It looks perfect. I mean, I can't see a bad bounce for any of these attackers, so we're looking for a lot of attack opportunities tonight no pristine tonight at Phoenix rising soccer complex the uh, sellout crowd was anticipated and it is hot tonight in Phoenix there are projected to be hydration breaks in both the first half and the second half that means uh, the temperature well above 90 degrees field side and uh, it's, uh, perhaps part of the reason why the crowd begins a little thin Wright Phillips tries to go to the back heel it's very important based on the weather. Uh, that type of temperature, you want to make sure the players, they take their time to really deep, get the, uh, knee deep into this game. Um, you, they have to understand that they don't want to exhaust themselves early on into the game. A lot of touches, a lot of uh, spreading in the field, that's going to be important to make sure that they keep their energy uh, levels up. And meanwhile, Albert Munoz here, who uh, at, at a time was the second youngest player in MLS, is laughing. <laughs> pregame at the thought of a hydration break when MLS started. You have to understand that just never happened. I mean, maybe when I was a youth player playing under six or seven, we had a couple of stops during the game, but at 15 to 25, I never had a hydration break. <laughs> Matt Bersano will bring the ball back. This is fifth start. He's made 16 saves through four games. That's so important to have a, a goalkeeper that you have a lot of confidence in. I mean, just in the last game I was calling, uh, players that really support their team, they, they, they provide leadership. That's always going to be helpful for the, for the mindset and the mentality for the team uh, going into that game. Between he and Cohen, there's plenty of uh, that on the field here tonight. Dane Kelly carries the ball ahead into an attacking position. He scored in the second minute. Dane Kelly, goal number 51, and he extends his own USL goal scoring record. Well, the fireworks have started early in Phoenix tonight. 
as we see this replay, we were just talking to the player to watch. What an exceptional lead up. What a great strike. I mean, you can't ask for more for your striker to come off in the first second minute and score a goal right off the bat. Excellent strike and beautiful goal. Not a bad celebration either. Well, this is not a good moment for Phoenix when you consider that they allowed three goals in the last 15 minutes against Swole Park and then concede in the second minute against Reno. This locker room, they talked about it after the game and speaking with the interim head coach, Rick Schantz, coming into the game, he said the veterans were not happy with a 4-3 win because you had a four-goal lead right. with 15 minutes to go. Yeah, it's kind of unacceptable at the end of the day. I mean, you need to make sure you keep your defensive proudness, uh, you know, uh, up the whole game. I mean, even if you score 10 goals, but you give up seven goals, that's not right. So I agree with Coach, I mean, and the veteran players. They need to make sure that they always keep their level up no matter what to the last minute of the game. Vasquez tosses it in in the fourth minute of play. Comes now to Mfeka, South Africa's first MLS player in uh, quite some time when he uh, was taken by San Jose and loaned out to Reno. Quick throw in by Yule. Yule sends service. Not it away for Phoenix. I'm interested, in Mike, to see how Phoenix reacts to this goal. It's tough when you get scored on the first minute. Um, you, you're just starting. I mean, you, you have most of your players haven't even touched the ball. How do you react to that? I mean, it's very important to see how they do. That's going to implement the, the pace for the rest of the game for Phoenix. Lagrassa, former Sacramento Republic man. There's a, a couple of those on this roster. Kip Colvie also hails in that neck of the woods professionally as play coming back. Ramage, the captain for this Phoenix side, knocking the ball over the end line as uh, play going back 30 yards upfield, a throw for uh, Phoenix Rising. That's midfield and past Rigi. Hoppano, and here's Lagrassa. Hoppano, former FC Cincinnati man. A, a bit of a surprising move to right back for him coming off the bye week. Yeah, so far in the first four minutes, Mike, uh, Reno has really taken over. I mean, they, they've touched the ball well. They've already scored a goal. They've obviously held on well. Um, and they keep going at it. So, I mean, Phoenix really needs to step up. Played across the face of goal. Stewart blasts it away. First it was Brown, then it was Yule. To your point, of yeah. course. They're, they're essentially going to have to start you know, picking up the pace. They really need to grab the ball. They need to hold. They get to, their key players get a touch on the ball. Bravo, come on. Cort Cortez, come on. Hopefully they obviously get together before they get another goal. Brown, Kelly, that's two in six minutes. Wow. <laughs> his second brace of the year, and Dane Kelly, not just his 51st, now his 52nd. Whoa. To my point, <laughs> Phoenix needs to step up defensively, and Kelly just needs to keep on playing because everything he touches turns into goal. As you see this, this replay, exceptional. With the right foot in the first goal, left foot shot, perfectly placed in the right-hand corner, uh, unstoppable shot. Great lead up here by by uh, the Jamaican striker, Kelly. You know, I think most people coming in thought it would be the other number nine who would make the biggest impact in the first 10 minutes, but Dane Kelly has been shot out of a cannon in this affair for Reno. You are right. That's so important for the team's momentum and, and confidence. I mean, everything they're going to do now is play it to Kelly. Play it to Kelly because he's on fire, and that's what you want in a striker. Phoenix now, uh, the uh, the entire game has, has flipped over now, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not sure how, what they're really going to try to do now. I mean, they, they ideally just want to grab the ball. They want to have some possession first. They want to ground themselves and get those players, the key players, to touch the ball. Maybe maybe come off a, off a wall pass, maybe create something. But Omar Bravo hasn't touched the ball. Not yet. Pressure moving in there for Phoenix and ultimately produces the turnover. Cortez pushed from behind and maybe a golden opportunity now for Phoenix in the eighth minute. 
as uh, two early goals, the second minute and the sixth. And Dane Kelly has uh, put this entire game on its head. The uh, former Charleston Battery man last year with Swope Park reached the USL Cup final. And maybe now Bersano will be the one under pressure. It's a dangerous shot here by Rooney. I mean, he's going to have an opportunity to get a, a, the first free kick for Phoenix. Um, he's known for his free kick uh, specialty. Uh, so, well, they switched it on him. Wow. Persano makes the save, and Cortez is the one who takes it. Surprising. Left foot in swinger. Great shot. Almost an upper 90 shot there. Great block by, by uh, Reno's goalie, uh, Berzano. Well, maybe that's the shot in the arm that Phoenix needed. Now Rooney will get a chance on a set piece. Well, thankfully we're eight minutes in. <laughs> Plenty of time. Rooney headed back in by Cortez. And that back out to the right-hand side as it went off of Rigi. Rooney serves opposite post and a little too much juice. Going back to Kelly and his shots, I mean, both goals are almost identical shots. Low, stricken, powerful shots. I mean, this pitch is so nice. I mean, it must be nice and wet. It's been watered, so that ball is going to go at, at a faster pace. So it's going to be tough for the goalie to come down and defend. So, I mean, impressive two shots, two goals from Kelly right on the onset. There he is, chatting with his strike partner. It's a 4-4-2 for this group. He's been working with Brown, who set him up on the second goal. That ball chested to Rigi, and then knocked out. Speaking last year with Mark Dos Santos, who was the head man for Swole Park and led that group from the middle of the standings into the playoffs into the USL Cup final said honestly Dane Kelly just didn't train well early on in his career and it may have stunted his growth a bit but uh, his USL production is second to none in a very literal sense if he only he had trained he said <laughs> I mean that, that's absolutely true I mean it could hinder your, your growth I mean just like anything else in life right I mean if you don't practice if you don't work well you're not going to develop Brown Slid to the left-hand side, a third save by Cohen, he held on. And Chris Wien was looking for his first of the year, his first pro goal, but Cohen up to the task. What an exceptional, exceptional lead up by Brown on the right-hand side. Great pass into the middle. I mean, Reno's really developing play really well uh, early on in this game. I mean, it's making it very difficult for Phoenix to defend. Well, maybe uh, that's a bit of a turning point for this Phoenix side that is conceded now five goals in about 25 game minutes. Wow. Since that red card to Cody Wakasa against Swope Park. D does it carry from game to game when you begin to get a little defensively uh, out of place? Well, yeah, I mean, the confidence is lost. I mean, you, you, hopefully, you, I guess you depend on your attacking proudness. You attack, you depend on your players to come and score goals, even though you're, you're getting scored on. So it does roll over. I mean, you just have to get a couple of good games, uh, solid games defensively to really get that momentum going. Rooney plays it wide, cross in towards right. Phillips, Rigi, and the ball kicked away from him in the nick of time. Another opportunity for Vasquez, kept by Cortez. And blasted off the foot of the defense of Hoppano, and it's a corner to Phoenix. It's great promise here from Phoenix. I mean, it's showing a little bit more energy uh, now that they're down 2-0. They really have to step it up. Um, hopefully, we see these players connect, such as the man who's getting taken the corner kick right now, Sean Wright. Uh, has so much experience in the premiership. Um, growing up, I, yeah, growing up, we used to watch him. Um, he's one of the, the most energetic players I've ever seen. Uh, he's only 5'6", but he had so much speed, and he has speed. Um, he brings a lot of element of experience here for, for Phoenix. Right, Phillips uh, quite nearly finding Ramage. And th there's Bravo, a bit of gamesmanship, putting the ball right on the line for Bersano at the top of your screen. And Bersano wanted it on the other side, maybe a bit of gamesmanship of his own. The former Chivas player, I mean, I also grew up watching him. I mean, exceptional talent, bravo. So many goals for, for the Mexican side. Um, I really hope he connects well here with Cortez up front and, and really puts on a show for the local crowd. Kelly will give chase, here's a Cohen now. Who were the players? You, you were in MLS as a teenager. Uh, who did you watch to kind of develop your game? 
Well, globally, I mean, I always had a, a fascination with the attacking midfielders of, of those generations, which are uh, first Pelé and then Maradona, uh, Diego Maradona of the Argentine, obviously as as corrupt and, and controversial he's always been, but as a player, he's always been top-notch for me. Um, Valderrama, who was an MLSer as well, also an idol growing up, Colombian. Uh, so I had a couple of uh, really, really known players to really look up to. Wright Phillips trying to play Cortez. That's just a bit too far for him. You, you know, you could have said Drogba or you could have said Bravo, but, <laughs> there's so but they're many. strikers. They're not for you. There's so many, but, but you're right. I mean, Drogba <laughs> came later. I mean, Drogba playing for Chelsea for so many years. I mean, he's someone that we looked up to. Uh, but Obravo, Obravo's, Obravo's even younger. He's obviously he's maybe, f I think, like eight years younger than I am. So, I mean, it's a different generation that we looked up to. Yeah, you, you've, uh, <laughs> you've exposed your age, young man. <laughs> I just did. Oh, that's a great nutmeg there. Brown quite nearly got through that Phoenix defense. So Colin takes over again. His numbers this year are great, but the, the last 30 minutes or so have not been good to him. Well, his defense, I mean, it's tough to defend those two shots. Mm -hmm. I mean, th those are well well strike shots. I mean, you can't stop those unless you have a defender that really ricochets it off. But as a goalie, you're almost defensive, defenseless against those type of shots from Bain Kelly. That's an obvious handball against Jackson Ewell. Who wasn't in the 18 last time around after starting uh, the first four. Vasquez. That's a nice move to get around Hoppano. Ball nearly ricocheted to Cortez, who tried to step in there as well. Phoenix buzzing now. Stop that man. Goals in the second and sixth. Dane Kelly, number nine in gray. I like how Reno comes out from the back. They really know how to open up well with their defenders out wide. I mean, getting the ball to the target man up front to hold it, help uh, the, the, the play to develop. Um, they really have formation in place when it comes to coming out from the back, uh, this Reno side. And it's the midfielder by trade, Hoppano, who puts it in play. The Frenchman who last year played for John Harkes in Cincinnati. One of the cornerstones of the franchise in the offseason as Reno built a roster from scratch. Cortez can't catch up. And uh, the ball aimed towards Ramage, who uh, collects it. Speaking of John Harkes and, and, and age, I mean, John Harkes is one of those players that we looked up uh, to as, an, as a U.S. national team player, along with Tab Ramos. They were all in the league when, when I was playing. They were the, the veterans. And to think that now they have kids, they have their children playing in either USL or MLS teams, it's exceptional. There's a 20-year gap there, and that's insane that they're, they're developing that well. I just called the game where Ariel Lassiter's playing now. That's Roy Lassiter's son. <laughs> Roy Lassiter, I played with him in the Miami Fusion. I mean, he was my veteran. So uh, it's it's great to see that former MLS players and World Cup veterans have, have kids that are playing these leagues now. It really is remarkable. Is uh, Ian Harks, the Wake Forest man, uh, playing with DC United, and drawing some oohs and ahs from his dad, who's uh, was just in Atlanta watching him play last week. Hoppano ripped down by Vasquez. Ian Russell is a calling for a card. And is that the direction that our referee, Joseph Dickerson, will go? He's giving him a warning. That should have been a yellow card. Hey! Hey! Let him get in position! Hey! Well, Joseph Dickerson will have a, a quick talk over here as well. I remember Ian Russell in the MLS as well. Gritty player, a hard worker, uh, playing for San Jose for many years. Yeah, played for Frank Yollop, who uh, of course resigned before the bye week. The assistant for the Phoenix side, Rich Schantz, stepping into the head man role during uh, the off week. Watson played around that same time as Russell. Ball bounces down, right Phillips finding Bravo. Across the face, a goal over. Reggie knocked over by Cortez. Oh, 
the goal mouth was yawning for Cortez to put Phoenix back in it. Exceptional, exceptional lead up by Watson. Up the midfielder, he played it out wide. And we got a great cross and combination play by Wright Phillips, Phillips and Omar Bravo. But unfortunately, it cannot be capitalized by Phoenix. But they're getting there. And this game is way too early to say that Reno is obviously going to be convincing uh, in a win. We have 17 minutes in, and we have these type of plays from Phoenix. So it's showing a lot of promise on their side. This Phoenix team coming off just one of the most demoralizing losses you could get. As, uh, they've been off since the 22nd of April. They allowed a goal in the final seconds against Colorado Springs at home. That could have been their first USL win. They've come so very close multiple times. And Ian Russell has a good roster of experienced veterans. It's not a matter of when. It's a matter of, of uh, just how soon it will occur. Not if. Sure, Mike. I mean, it takes time. I mean, to develop, uh, uh, you know, within early in the season. I mean, you have a lot of new players and you have a lot of uh, formation struggles. Um, it's difficult to concede goals at the last minute. But again, it's early on in the season. You have obviously the momentum going for the first four or five or six games. Um, so it's a matter of time where all these teams really start meshing well. Kelly through ball, left hand side shot is wide. And finally, it breaks for Phoenix in the 19th minute. Dane Kelly, who struck from there several times, played it into an offside position, but very easily could have had a whack for a third. The question is, should he have taken that shot or should he have crossed it into the middle? Because it was it was either neither or. I mean, he it looked like he just he tried to take a shot, but he regretted it at the last minute. He tried to <laughs> hit a cross, so maybe he had to make a better decision there uh, for Reno. Brought down by Lagrassa, but uh, comes to right Phillips. Gray, wide by Cortez, right Phillips. Here's Gray in for the uh, suspended Cody Wakasa. And of course, a, a big change during this off, uh, off week as in came Jordan Gibbons, the former QPR man. Be interesting to see whether or not uh, he will factor in in the not so distant future. Hey fans, stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Sirius XMFC Channel 85. Don't forget, Sirius XMFC airs the USL Game of the Week. Check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. Mike Watts with Albert Munoz, 20 minutes in. Dane Kelly scoring in the second and the sixth. The chances even since then, but Reno, they... Uh, <laughs> quick two goal lead in this one they capitalized those two quick opportunities and they're up 2-0 Phoenix I definitely see a Rooney having to step up in the midfielder to really make a difference uh, as an attacking midfielder you have to make sure that your presence is felt you have to make sure that you know your team has confidence in you to, in you to get the ball to you and hold the ball well um, but if not it's going to be difficult to catch some momentum for Phoenix knocked back by Lagrassa one of many Cal Poly players on this roster. They're everywhere. <laughs> For both these teams, there's Cal Poly guys. It, it really is remarkable. We mentioned Cody Wakasa being out this week. He's a Cal Poly guy. It's a reunion. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Rooney, to your point, stepping right in on Kelly. Cohen gets it before Brian Brown arrives on the scene. Rigi had a great goal against Swope Park last time out. Rooney, a nice ball in to right. Phillips gets it back. Rooney, a left-footed blast. It's up and left of the bar. There he is. More of that. We need more of that from Rooney. We need him to get involved. Link up with players like Sean Wright. Uh, I can't imagine why those two Englishmen won't link up on every type of pass to link up uh, a through ball for Bravo, who you know very well if he put him in the right situation, he'll most likely put it in the goal. There's Rooney, three goals and an assist thus far for the Englishman who dealt with injury, spoke with our Jose Bosch before the game about it. But uh, appears to look a lot closer to 100% than he does zero now. Papano's pass, uh, not a great first touch, but ultimately recovers and 
glides up the wing against Stewart. Make it Watson who uh, knocks it over. That was a well drawn out foul by Hoppin. I mean, he knew he was in the corner. He didn't have much help or assistance. So, hey, why not draw a free kick for our team and hopefully get uh, someone to connect on the aerial battle in the, in the 18 yard box. Here's Yule, the sixth overall pick in the 2017 Super Draft of San Jose, a generation Adidas guy who uh, played on the West Coast with UCLA and gets to stay there with Reno now on loan. He stands to the right, but it's Wien who curls the ball towards the net. LaGrasse is looking for a call, but the play is still alive. Rigi, a shove on the end line and a goal kick to Phoenix. Well, Phoenix protecting a two-game home winning streak in game three of a four-game homestand, but Reno, starved for a win, has come out of the gates blasting. Vasquez, Rigi, Rooney. Vasquez up the left-hand wing, a high arcing cross that goes out over the end line. Nothing there in the 24th minute. Sano signed a multi-year deal with San Jose on loan. Last year with the Sounders 2. Was a trialist for the organization. Simply impressed enough. The Oregon State to Penn State transfer in his collegiate days in goal. Rigi. Keeps the ball in play for Wright Phillips. The pass for Bravo. Cut out. Morell goes long. This game is available using the SAP button and Espanol. Or for those of you joining us in English, Mike Watts with Albert Munoz into the 25th minute as Reno holds a two goal lead. Brown, an excellent touch. Brown streaking, collides with Stewart, and held by Cohen. Fair challenge? Yeah, fair, cha fair, fair challenge. Uh, so far, I mean, Mike, I was going to make a comment in reference to possession. I mean, both both teams are holding the ball well now. Um, uh, Phoenix is really settled in their midfield with Watson and Rooney linking up. Rooney stepped up a little bit, started getting a little bit more involved, uh, showing his presence, which is very, very important for Phoenix if they want to capitalize on Omar Bravo or Cortez up, up top. Uh, but on the flip side, Reno, uh, Hopena, obviously Weehan in the morning, uh, in the morning, in the, <laughs> in the middle, um, uh, linking up with Brown and Kelly up top. I mean, they're doing exceptional jobs to create opportunities, uh, these speedsters up um, as attackers. Look at Kelly fly again off of Stewart. Papano gets it, playing in the right back position. Running right into a brick wall in Rigi. Papano went low, Stewart deflected it down. Going up the line, and you'll get that whistle more often than you won't if it's Omar Bravo, the player down. And they wanted to move quickly in yeah. the official bringing it back. He's showing fr some frustration there. I mean, he wants to capitalize on, on the momentum he has. I mean, no one's really prepared. He wants to take advantage. Uh, but it's, it's tough to get called back and then obviously it slows down the pace of the game again. How about Omar Bravo? When you take a foul in that position, you allow your whole team to flip the field, right? Yeah, but he, he saw an opening. Maybe he saw a through pass that maybe would be advantageous for his team. Um, but I... I I would agree. It's probably best if he let the ball to a midfielder and he pushed up and maybe linked up in a different position. There are a lot of things Omar Bravo sees on a field that I don't. Uh, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I would agree.
sometimes it just feels like the difference between like Bob Ross and Pablo Picasso. It's just not a fair comparison <laughs> of artistic hey, talent. Hey, Bob Ross. We grew up on Bob Ross. You might be younger than I am, but Bob Ross is a superstar. <laughs> Uh, it's a picturesque view here, but I'm not even sure Bob Ross could totally encapsulate <laughs> Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex tonight. <laughs> oh, Bob Ross. Yeah. There's some mountains in the uh, pregame shots we, we had there. He would draw those. He would draw those. And maybe some happy trees, too, as a hop and a steps in. Just too long there. But Reno's really trying to, you know, link up their star players. It seems that the best way for them to to reach their full momentum is when they are at full speed and they're going on the flanks and they're getting touches in with their crosses. Um, when you have players like, like Kelly who's on fire, everything that he touches is potentially going to get a, a proper shot or even a goal. So it makes sense for them to really link up with him constantly. Joseph Dickerson is uh, playing mediator right now. Comes down to Cortez. Bravo did well to set him up for the ball. Vasquez, and now Cortez. He'll give this a ride himself. Right, Phillips, that goes over the defender, Colby. Slightly different hop, and we're talking about Wright Phillips rifling that towards net. Speaking of Wright Phillips, I mean, if you go back 10 years watching him play for Chelsea in the Premiership, um, to think that, you know, him linking up with a player like, like uh, Didier, obviously, and, and Bravo in one team in yeah. the same league, I mean, that's unheard of. That's incredible for, for the U.S. soccer and for the development of, of all our, our players and, and the league nationwide. And this Phoenix market right now is bursting at the seams in excitement. Another 7,000-plus sellout in terms of tickets uh, of out for this game. Standing room only tickets were going this morning. A question is in the in, in the locker room who's the who's the true leader there between these veterans? Uh, and I would assume that Didier comes in and he's going to top uh, the other two, uh, Sean Wright and, and Omar Bravo. But still, they bring such presence to all these youngsters that, to, to really reflect on their experience that it's priceless when it comes to Phoenix. And yet it's Ramage right now who's wearing that captain's armband, a guy who's been around the franchise a little bit longer. There's a lot of, of experience, and if everybody decides to play nice... Sure. This is a locker room that could be just as potent in there as it is oh out yeah. here. Oh yeah, and that's a contender for this for this league. Um, Ray, that's towards the net and ultimately carried away for Reno. That was a dangerous ball there, but yeah, back to what I was saying. I mean, if you if you look and you put all these teams uh, these players together and and they really link up for a whole season and they're cohesive and obviously they know and they mesh well. Uh, you have a top five contender for the, for the season. That's the expectation around these parts. A couple of wins in a row, and they're feeling pretty good. Six goals in the last two games, but uh, just a little bit shell-shocked at the outset here. As the ball caroms down to Chris Wean. Back now from Fekka. Reno pushing forward in the 31st minute, maybe their best possession of the game, but they turn it over. Slid away from Rigi. Lifted into space for Vasquez. And Reno controls. Hey, soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the United Soccer League. For more information, visit NikeSoccer.com. Thirty-second minute. Mike Watts, Albert Munoz, our SAP partners, available in Spanish. Director Tom Piro, producer Alex Goldstein, glad to have you with us on what is a steamy night in Phoenix. But it's Rochester, or pardon Reno, the team that's on fire early. Reno, the expansion team in the league, and the only one that uses its founding year 
in its title, 1868. The only American club at any level to do that. Josh Cohen. Line that over Cortez, who's pointing for a Phoenix throw that did deflect off of Colby. Taking on the defense one man at a time. Sliding down, and A.J. Gray doesn't get the benefit of the call. Mike, let's talk possession for a second. I mean, what do you think is the the balance here between the two teams? I mean, we've seen equal uh, opportunities on both sides. We've seen shots. We've seen attempts. Obviously, we've seen a couple goals. But I'd say that Reno has improved. Sorry, uh, Phoenix has improved in the last 15 minutes um, after the first couple of goals that they had. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. And, and – Reno's passing is at 78%. They're top 10 in the league in passing. It's no surprise that they're knocking the ball around with success. That's so important to hold the ball well and possession involved, in, in, especially in, in your midfielder um, section. It's it's almost, I'd say, as important as scoring a goal. Almost. I mean, yeah, almost. <laughs> um, obviously, scoring a goal is much more important, but ultimately, if you can't hold the ball well, then you're not, you're not creating opportunities. You're going to play a break away, breakaway game, and that's not uh, cohesive either for, for uh, a season uh, developing team. No, a bit of chicken in the egg, isn't it? <laughs> right. That is. It is. But ultimately, scoring a goal is the goal, right? Reno pushing into the final third, and the flag was up on the other side. Chris Weehan does not agree. Played at the University of New Mexico. Trialed with Reno in February and uh, number 14 in gray. Now part of the equation as a starter for the third time in his first pro season. Cohen delivers it downfield. The USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world. Featuring some of the game's top talent and rising stars. Stay up to date with all the latest league news and information by visiting uslsoccer.com and follow them on the Twitter at USL. All the highlights found there on Twitter in real time. Great stuff from Nicholas Murray and the editorial team over at uslsoccer.com and all the work they're putting in. Speaking of technology, Mike, I mean, how important is it for, um, you know, the youth, the fans, the players, everyone involved to have such high technology nowadays where you can actually follow highlights, you know, recap, you know, you literally have everything accessible on a phone. Uh, so how that's so important for the development of any league, of any player and, and the involvement of our fans. We didn't have that 15 years ago. I mean, so it's a huge different, uh, difference for, for every aspect of professional sports. No, and, and spoke about it on SiriusXM on, on Monday night. There's a game on all the time. There is always a game on on YouTube. It's incredible with this league right now. Yeah, there's a lot of games, a lot of a lot of activity, a lot of energy, alignment, a lot of a potential um, improvement from all these 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds that are getting minutes week after week. That's something that's that's crucial for for any player that wants to obviously aspire to continuously improve their game. And any team that wants to improve, obviously, going to have those type of players continuously getting the reps. Um, and the fact that they could actually go watch tape, they could watch themselves online, they could see their highlights, they could obviously follow themselves, any, any social media um, aspect, it's, it's going to be very beneficial. Make no mistake, it's a big reason why there have been three ESPN top ten plays in the three weeks of the USL game of the week. Is Cortez taps that ball to himself, he fires! Oh, it would have been spectacular if he had uh, found a way to keep that down. He saw himself by himself. He didn't have anyone, anyone to support him. So you know what? Let's set, set himself up with the volley, touch it to the right-hand side, and he took a whack at it. 
What's that? What's that hand up? What's that mean for a guy giving it a good, good college try? That's I'm sorry, but in slang, it's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. But you're not really apologizing because you took a shot. But at the end of the day, you want to look at your team and say, I might have passed it to you, but no, I, I'm sorry, I took a shot. <laughs> my bad. It it's courtesy. It's a colloquialism. My exactly. bad. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that all the time. <laughs> a lot, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should. I shouldn't have been so selfish in taking a shot. Mike Watts with the Albert Munoz MLS wonder kid at one point in time who at a time did indeed apologize on a regular basis. <laughs> Reno is nearly stretched out a bit there. It's coming all the way back. Ray Phillips returns to his position. Nearly 500 appearances in the English Premiership. Incredible. Most recently playing with his brother at uh, Red Bull New York. Bradley Wright Phillips, this ball all the way across, nearly skipped onto the foot of Cortez. But uh, ultimately it is a corner for Phoenix. What I always found impressive about Sean Wright was his his size. I mean, let's be honest, he's 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, at most, playing in the Premiership. One of the most brutally competitive uh, leagues in the world. I mean, to play 500 games plus, I mean, that's, that's exceptional. It's impressive. Bravo decided to go quickly there. The service wasn't quite on frame. And Cortez swings down in the box, and Joseph Dickerson pointing for a throw. Have an opinion on that? Mm, he's not having it. That wasn't, <laughs> no. I don't think that was suffice to be called as a penalty kick. Cortez behind the defense again, aimed for Bravo, bounces all the way to the top. Rigi, save, kicked away. Persano getting low, and it's cleared out. Well struck by Rigi. That's, he couldn't have hit it any better. I mean, that was a great job on, on the goalie from Reno, uh, Berzano blocking that shot. Great attempt, though. Stewart. Reno scored two quickly. Phoenix trying to get one back before the break. And Wright Phillips involved this a moment ago. As we see Cortez crossing the ball, and we have the deflection, the bicycle kick deflection. Uh, what a what a lead up! I mean, chest down, perfect volley. He timed it well. Um, exceptional attempt uh, by the Phoenix uh, strike uh, midfielder Rigi. Did you see that ball take one extra hop before he struck it? Is is that how you prefer to take that shot? Yes, when it's when it's bouncing, you want to lead up to it. And you want to get it on the bounce up. You okay. put a chest over it, and you get that wonderful strike. You have more power with that type of shot. And that's why I never scored. <laughs> It is one of the most difficult uh, shots of time, I'll be honest. But once you hit it right, it's almost guaranteed to go into it, some kind of powerful shot. Yeah, mission accomplished there. <laughs> Brown threw his arms out, and now he gets the ball played to his feet. Met by Vasquez, keeps the ball, and winds off towards the corner. Hapano. Well, he did well to keep that in play. Oh. Flag up there is uh, the interchange from Infeca. Beg your pardon, and Hapano. That was a tight call. Even, even Coach Russell was, was irate on that one. Cortez, number streaming forward in red and brown. The foul on Cortez. Is this the magic night for Reno 1868 FC where they finally break through, get that first franchise win? Watson. Cortez just a little too far out in front of Vasquez. Could this be the night? I would say they, they deserve it. Uh, Reno has been exceptional on possession. 
They've capitalized on a couple of well-struck shots by Kelly. I mean, G. Cortez back down the middle. Rooney to his left oh! by Bersano. Rooney stepped up. I hadn't seen him in a, in, a, in a few minutes. Came up with a great touch and shot. It's the need of the Englishman. I mean, he needs to be more involved in that sense. Going forward, I mean, he, he's reserving himself. It seems like he's obviously pacing his touches. He's not constantly on the ball, but when he does appear, he does this type of magic. This is what we need from the number 10. It's worth noting, there's a lot of sweat there. There was a, a planned hydration break that apparently was called off as uh, the sun setting has done well to knock some degrees off the thermometer at field side. Hopping over for Bersano. Gray, Wright Phillips. Gray circling around, but Wright Phillips choosing to go back. Vasquez. Rigi, Rigi. Not enough on the pass between the two. Rooney plays it through. Wright Phillips looking for Bravo. Neither the two have scored, and yet they each lead the team in chances created with eight apiece. Phoenix's ideal situation is to get a goal here right before half. That will change the momentum and the mentality going into the second half after that pep talk in the locker room. Wow, from Cortez. Bravo. Ripped away by LaGrasa. Kelly into space. Flag stays down. The race is on. Stepping forward, saved by Cohen. Net is open. Whoa! Stewart getting back to the line, and Brown denied twice. I thought that was in by Brown. What an incredible stop by Stewart. But great lead up by Reno. I mean, it looked like it was offside in that pass from Kelly. Beautiful place pass with his left foot. But Brown on the one-on-one, -on -one, ricocheted off the goalie. Great attempt. And then that second shot. Brown. Grossa the spin. Wright Phillips takes it away. A little bit of ball magic himself. Cortez. <laughs> Can a goal line clear like it. that? Still bring you a little momentum before the half. Oh, of course. <laughs> Look at this. This is the lead up. Rigi, Bravo, lifts the ball across. Two minutes of stoppage time for Reno, can't come fast enough. Kelly sprints into position. Kelly to his left, he cut it back across and misfired on a potential first half hat trick. Yes, you can get a lot of momentum from this type of save here from Stewart and Backlund. This is the type of situation you want for your defender. Look at that. Agility, that was great. Stewart, 35 years old, was looking a bit like a spring chicken out there. Oh, wow. That's a veteran in my eyes. <laughs> 35 years old. But you know what? He, like you said, he he plays like a 28 year old. 28 year old probably takes care of himself really well. At 35, Mike, coming from a 35 year old, <laughs> you need your stretching. You need to you need to drink a lot of water. There's some 35 year old players that can't tie their own cleats anymore. <laughs> Second minute of stoppage time in the first half. Hapano, Lagrasa in that central midfield role. Spinning it up the left hand wing for Colby. No expense spared by Phoenix in the energy department in the final seconds of this first half. It'll be interesting, interesting to see if, if both teams occupy their, their three subs in the second half. Um, I would assume that they're going to give it their all for the first 60, 70 minutes, and then uh, respectively, they'll start making your subs um, accordingly. 
This is a uh, Reno side still without their captain, Nick von Niederhauser. Other than that, so these teams more healthy than not. Stewart steps in, stops the attack, and Reno scores bang bang, second and sixth minute. What did you like from Phoenix after that bat? Well, the reaction, I mean, they definitely stepped up. They know they could play. I mean, they have a lot of attacking uh, talent. Um, and Stewart and Ramage, um, Ramage, sorry, in the back, they're, they're playing well. Uh, so they have a lot of opportunities in the second half coming up. They have plenty of time. Um, there's no need to panic for their side. Just whenever, it's just, whenever we're ready to go. It's just Reno essentially scoring two we goals can. in the top. I mean, it's very tough. Dane Kelly scores two. Goal in the second. Goal in the sixth. He's got 52 United Soccer League goals go. now. That is the most of any USL player. All happy news for the roadside in the second. And then again in the sixth, Dane Kelly, the man early. Halftime coming up. Trolls. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 <laughs> this is Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. The Heineken family passed down a special gift. An original recipe with only three ingredients and all of them natural. I also have a special gift. The ability to cry on demand. Beautiful. Only three natural ingredients. There's more behind the star. Explore the Southwest lifestyle, the culture, the music, the food. Y más. Join hosts JR Cardenas and Vanessa Ramirez for a Southwest adventure on Subida. Travel the state, enjoy the food, discover new artists, and fun things to do. Every week, JR and Vanessa share their discoveries with you. Subida. Watch Subida on Your View every Sunday and Wednesday on Cox Channel 1007 or at yourview.com. Phoenix Rising Football Club trae el más alto nivel de fútbol soccer profesional a Arizona. Y ahora el legendario delantero del Chelsea y Costa de Marfil, Didier son más alto. Pero el nuevo estadio de fútbol de Phoenix Rising se llena en cada juego. Phoenix Rising Football Club contra OKC Energy Football Club. Sábado 13 de mayo, 7.30 p.m. En vivo en Your View, Arizona. Phoenix Rising Football Club. Un mundo de poder y pasión. Rising como uno solo. 2-0 in favor of Reno 1868. Phoenix a bit behind the gun from the outset. Goals in the second and the sixth from the great Dane Kelly. Let's take a look at our first half statistics from this affair. As in this one, just two quick goals from Reno changing the entire dynamic, but the shots and the possession end even. Yeah, I mean, it's basically 50-50 at this point. And it, I, like I mentioned before, Phoenix reacted really well to the two goals off in the, in the first couple of minutes. Uh, the shots are basically equal. Uh, shots on target, the quality is a little bit better on the Reno side, but like I said, it's still early on in the game. They have a whole half left. Let's see what happens. Well, it's been a tough first half for Rick Schantz, the interim head coach. Frank Yellup resigned on April 24th, and for the first time he's interviewed by our own Jose Bosch on the sideline as he went to the locker room. Thank you guys, we're here with head coach Rick Schantz. Coach, Ladies not the beginning that you want, but the team was able to create some chances, so what's that going to be for the momentum going into the second half? Yeah, it definitely uh, wasn't how we wanted to start the game. Uh, you know, we got caught on a second ball, and, and then we had a midfield turnover, and we got punished uh, both times. So, um, you know, I know the guys are pretty upset. They came out with a little bit more energy uh, later. Uh, and then I think they spent a little bit too much trying to chase after that goal. So we're going to get uh, reorganized and we're going to get after the second half. I, uh, you know, I, I know we're all a little disappointed, but I do expect more from the guys in the second half. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Guys, back to you in the booth. 
Thank you, Jose. The youngins have taken over the field at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex and 7,000 on the edge of their seats to see if they can produce chances like we've seen in this first half. We take a look back at the week that was in the United Soccer League and we'll have highlights from this affair as well. Coming up after this timeout, Reno ahead, two goals to nil. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. Did you check? Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Raise the stakes. Expectations are high. Our biggest season yet will break records with elite players and future stars. Innovative technology and new homes. We're growing the game in our communities and across the nation. Are you ready? built the USL into the largest Division II professional soccer league in the world. And now the time has come to announce USL Division III, America's professional third division league, completing the U.S. pro soccer landscape. It's time for your town, your team, your game. D3 will fuel local pride and local passion, creating a new legacy for the beautiful game and inspiring its tribal following across the country. This is professional soccer, built on a disciplined financial model and operational excellence. Featuring exciting venues to thrill fans, in hungry new markets yearning for the game. USL Division Three, professional, passionate, proven. Pro soccer starts here, coming in 2019. For more information, visit USLD3.com. Reno scores quickly, second minute, sixth minute. Dane Kelly has been the man for the expansion side. They try and get their first win. Phoenix tries to protect a two game home winning streak. We look back at the first half highlights when we return to Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex.
At Pruitt's, savings and style live comfortably together. And right now, the selection has never been better. Just look at this three-piece Sonoma Shea sectional, only $599. And this urban casual four-piece bedroom, just $499. Visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection. Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street. Pruitt's, proudly serving the Valley for 65 years. Phoenix Rising FC is bringing the highest level of professional soccer to Arizona. And now, Chelsea and Ivory Coast legendary striker Didier Drogba will take us even higher. The new Phoenix Rising Soccer Stadium has sold out every game. So watch Phoenix Rising FC battle OKC Energy FC Saturday, May 13th at 7.30 p.m. Live on Your View Arizona. Phoenix Rising FC, rising as one. Hey, little man, I'm your new house. Come on in. This is going to be great. Watch what we can do together. Lights. Ta-da. Locks. Not bad, huh? Oh, and this. I've been saving this for you. You take care of the universe, I'll take care of you. Cox Home Life. Home security and automation. Halftime, the Banditos have not had very much to cheer for yet. Opportunities galore, but no bulge in the old onion bag. 2 nothing in favor of Reno 1868 FC over Phoenix as a sold-out crowd awaits the highlights from this first half. Mike Watts back with Albert Munoz. We look back at the first 45-minute highlights. And from the outset, it seemed like Reno came with the game plan to jump on this Phoenix side and better than Dane Kelly to do it. Capitalized on the first shot he took of the game. Capitalized on the second. I mean, the guy's on fire. Every single touch he's made has uh, turned into a goal tonight. And to your point, one with the right foot, one with the left, but a similar kind of shot in the second and now here in the sixth. Yeah, as you notice, low driven shots at the far post. I mean, great technical shot. Uh, you can't ask more from a striker to capitalize in the first five to seven minutes in the game. Well, this is in that sixth minute and by the diving Josh Cohen. Brown setting him up. Uh, Cohen did make a couple saves in this first half and he needed to. So too, of course, did the other goalkeeper in this affair. Opportunities galore for Phoenix to get back into it. It could have been worse, but Phoenix did react well. I mean, they did have a chance to maybe get a couple of shots before the half uh, that were really contenders of potential being goals. That ball cleared away on the cross. We move forward. As uh, Cortez right on the doorstep. Cortez, that uh, was a good effort. There were a couple of volley efforts for Phoenix in the first half. He was active. I mean, he had a couple of shots. Um, I remember Rooney stepping up for Phoenix, and he created a couple opportunities for his team. Cortez from the wing. Fell Rigi almost. Yeah, I mean, uh, Phoenix did step up well. They reacted to those two goals, and, he, and he, they had five or six shots on goal that were really excellent. Bersano got low to knock that ball away from the goal line in the 39th minute of play. Rooney said he was stepping up. That was his best chance of the first half. Yeah, I mean, they, the rest of the game, the rest of the first half was potentially all one-sided, but this was a great effort by Stewart, who essentially defended really well. He racked it off, right off the line. So Brian Brown had two opportunities. Cohen stopped one, Stewart the other. We look forward to the upcoming schedules for these teams, and we begin with Reno. David Vaudriol's Tulsa Roughnecks playing much better of late. They'll play on May 24th, a couple of consecutive home games at Greater Nevada Field, both starting 10.30. That's Eastern Standard Time. Then it's at Colorado Springs, a rematch of that heartbreak game last time out. And then a couple more home games. Sacramento falling tonight to San Antonio, who remained perfect, and RGV in the playoffs last year. On the other side, for Phoenix, the four-game homestand comes to a conclusion on May 13th. Will Didier Drogba make his debut in that game? Starts 7.30 Pacific time. Then at San Antonio, undefeated. Speaking with Rick Schantz this week, he said, that is the measuring stick for every team in the Western Conference right now. Part of a three-game road swing, Oklahoma City, then Vancouver, and, and you saw LA Galaxy uh, earlier today a bit. 
that's a team with a lot of talent on that group that could really stretch Phoenix. Energy and youth, that's what they have. They are an excellent team. They're developing a lot of their players. Well, there's Phoenix uh, fan base waiting for that golden moment. Plenty of opportunities in that first half. And if you're Rick Schatz going to the locker room, I asked him this week, is it maybe a bit overwhelming going into that locker room? And he said several of the superstar players came to him and said, you're the coach, you're the man. Well, now you're down two goals going into the locker room. What do you say to this group? Do you say keep going full speed ahead the way we did? Well, that just shows their professionalism of the experienced players. They want the coach to command the team. They want him to feel empowered. So he's going to come in and, and show his experience by saying, hey, let's regroup. Let's make sure that we turn this game around and let's create these opportunities. Let's take a look at the Western Conference standings while we have a moment. San Antonio has won its seventh game in eight tries. This was entering today, knocking off Sacramento a goal to nil. So Sacramento holds at third at the moment. Top eight make the playoffs, and of course Phoenix with six points and Reno with two outside playoff position at this point in time. But Phoenix, if they were able to get three points, would potentially move into that top eight. On the other side, in the Eastern Conference, Charleston just one loss to their name in first place. Tampa Bay and Louisville will be playing each other next week at Allang Stadium. That is a nasty rematch from their earlier performance a couple of weeks ago. Louisville, one of two undefeated sides in the United Soccer League right now. Pittsburgh impressing in the midweek at Highmark Stadium with a win over Toronto FC2. St. Louis FC sitting in fifth. A couple of losses to their credit after that undefeated start. And FC Cincinnati drawing a lot of eyes. And there's Dane Kelly, former Charleston battery man, who is leading this huddle after leading his team in the first half with a couple of goals in the second and the sixth minute. If you look to Reno, where's your mind if you're Ian Russell? It's one thing to have a two-goal lead at halftime. It's another to know that a, a lead evaporated in the final minutes last game. How do you make sure that's not part of the mentality? They want to keep the momentum up. They want to make sure they come back into the second half the same way they started get the ball to Kelly, feed it to Brown, make sure they continue that energy. They want to continue scoring goals. 3-4-0 is a very bit different story from 2-0. There's Dane Kelly. 52 USL goals now. It just seems like the number goes higher and higher every time he touches the field. Last time he did it as a sub, this time as a starter. His second brace, four goals on the year. And we're underway. Phoenix... In the red jerseys, move left to right. It's the gray and blue of Reno. Right to left, Cortez. Rooney stepping by. And the ball played down to the feet. Jimmy Oxford, who's had a, a quiet day. The captain at center back has not had to make all too many plays. Whipped in again towards Cortez. Too far? And then let out by Bersano. We definitely see a change here on Phoenix, though. Right off the onset, they're they're attacking. They're going to try to create their opportunities. Down the flank, they had Bravo create, create a cross. They just need to connect better at the end of that final touch. Um, it'll definitely make a difference, if, in, especially in the next five minutes, if they keep pressuring uh, Reno, they might get a goal. That would completely change the mindset of the game. We heard Rick Schantz talk about it. This is his first game as a manager at the professional level. He was at the PDL level previously and his numbers were outstanding. Kelly breaking through, pushing off of Gray, staying in play, and off of Cohen. He must have taken that off the noggin and out. He just saved the goal. Uh, that was that was potentially going into the upper 90. Great pressure from uh, Kelly. I mean, he outbodied a defender from Phoenix and then created a chance to, to score on, on the goal. Um, but that was a great save here by Cohen, with the, I mean, potentially with the face. The ensuing corner kick all the way across the face of goal, lobbed into the air towards Kelly. It's Yule playing it low. Cohen picks it up. And, and the difference between Kelly breaking through that time and previous, and it's something that, that Rick Yance uh, mentioned um, before we kind of got here, Rick Schantz rather, uh, the interim head coach with Jose Bosch, 
said it was turnovers in the midfield. This time it was the long ball to Kelly that was not the product of a turnover. Sure, I mean, you're going to see a lot of that type of uh, play. I mean, it's it's very important to get the midfielders to control the, the game and not let any, obviously, de developing plays through counterattacks. Uh, plays that were developed towards Kelly in the first half, um, I mean, they're exceptional through balls. We can't, really can't combat that. Uh, but that needs to be minimized um, f so that Phoenix actually has a chance to continue to potentially score a goal in this second half. Ramage did well to keep that away, and uh, the ball finds Phoenix in an attacking position now. Cortez. Back now for Rooney. Dances by the defense, playing to the feet of Cortez, who spun around and tapped the ball right to Bersano. I showed a little miscommunication there between Rooney and Cortez. I mean, uh, Rooney has done well in the first few minutes to grab the ball, to show his presence again create a pass or maybe potentially set himself up for a shot. Cortez thought he was going to keep running there for the through ball, a little wall pass action, but it didn't work out. Uh, but Cortez had a lot of activity in the first couple couple of minutes in the first half. 49th minute and uh, an opportunity now over Bravo. Oxford back out to midfield. Gray. E.G. Lifted up by Watson. Vita Bravo. Here he goes. Cortez. Rooney. Space on the wing if he can utilize it. He does. Ball crossed in. Bravo setting up under it. Two players slide together for the ball. Bounds out, Gray, Watson, Phoenix pressing forward, Watson overlapping, Gray chooses to go to Cortez. And looking for a rip, it's Vasquez who knocks it over. Hey fans, at every Phoenix Rising home game during the 2017 season, two lucky fans are upgraded to sit in the best seats in the house. Courtesy of Pruitt's Fine Furniture, lucky winners not only enjoyed tonight's action in the most comfortable seats directly on the pitch, those luxury reclining chairs are going to be delivered to their home next week as a gift from Phoenix Rising FC and Pruitt's Fine Furniture. He's looking a wee bit lonely there. How do I sign up? <laughs> yeah, there's a seat for you. Get walking. <laughs> Albert Munoz is about to be huffing it. We're going to find out just how, how how good those lungs are now after all these years retired. <laughs> I just ran a 5K uh, two weeks ago. How'd that go? It wasn't bad. You got a number for that? Uh, a 24-minute 5K. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still trying to finish that, that 5K <laughs> you ran two weeks ago. <laughs> 51st minute and the player down here for Reno. Yeah, he's probably run about five or six K. Sure. Taking a break. <laughs> Deserves it. That's right. And this Reno side uh, coming off that 2-2 draw to Colorado Springs. They have a couple of home games coming up, four home games in their next five. And Neem Russell said last week they're frustrated, the coaching staff frustrated as we see the injury here as Brown colliding. Yeah, he looked like he got knocked from the back. He should be fine. As uh, he pops back up, Brown the assist on the second goal by Dane Kelly. But after that point, he, he said it's late chances and corner kicks, but he felt like the best performance of the season for Reno came last game against Colorado Springs. They didn't get the result they wanted, but it appears to have set the table to make a, a better performance out of it in this game as Brown will actually check out. Mackenzie Pridham will come on in his stead. It's an early change. Uh, Brown has, has had uh, an exceptional showing. Uh, maybe they're resting them for the next uh, potential game. Aside from potential injury, I'm not sure why we're making the change this early. Britton coming on, former Sacramento player, trialist there. 58th pick in the 2014 MLS Super Draft of Vancouver. Bouncing around the West Coast now. As Kelly 
Goes down. Prudence, you think it is? To sub him out this early on for Brown? And it makes you wonder, Pridham seemed ready before Brown went down. It makes you wonder whether how just how planned that was. Right. For Brown, that's only his second start of the year, and he's only played 137 minutes, and in this case, Dan Kelly is offside. The turn for Wright Phillips. All squares past him. Comes now to Yule and into the back line. Hey, fans, stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Then into USL Coast to Coast, Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XMFC Channel 85. Don't forget, Sirius XMFC airs the USL Game of the Week. Check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. Colby. Backtracking for Reno side, holding a lead since the second minute and a two-goal lead since the sixth. Direction from Wien. Colby. Reno's goal here is to keep possession well. I mean, they're opening up the fields, looking for crosses, looking for any opportunity to have to capitalize on a third goal. Pridham. A little unlucky. That didn't take the hop he was looking for. And there was an opening there for Hoppano. Flag up for offside as a Cohen goes sliding in. Kelly will not get his third goal of the game there. That was just for practice. <laughs> just make sure he would, he would put it in if does it he, was actually off onside. Does, does he need practice? Practice? practice. Talking about practice? Dane Kelly isn't talking about practice. He's talking about the game. <laughs> the game he loves. <laughs> he almost got another practice right there. That was dangerous. It was all planned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lulled into a false sense of security there by uh, Kelly. Now that I saw Bravo touch the ball, I haven't seen him touch the ball much in this game in general. Um, I wonder why he's been silent. I mean, um, he's a matter. He's a, he's a player that's always been very loud. He's always been very uh, present um, in in his past with Chivas. I mean, he was an exciting player. Um, I really hope he steps his game to really, really uh, mesh well with his uh, attacking um, teammates because uh, he could be very, very dangerous when he has a chance. Yeah, and he leads the team in chances created according to Opta, and uh, that's great. But you are looking for him to come through with goals, and it, it feels like a matter of time. You're just surprised it hasn't come yet. Right. Good point. He's the type of player that once he scores one or two goals, he gets that momentum, and then he goes on a rampage and scores five or six in the next couple of games. And the team scored six goals in the last two games, and both Wright Phillips and Bravo did not score. It's eye-opening how good they could be with all cylinders rolling. Interesting. And there he is. He, uh, tracking back all over the ball. He looks like a guy who really does want to be on the ball right now, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Regi. Wires crossed. Hoppano watches it out. Hoppano back to being a 90 minute man like he was at Princeton when he was in Philadelphia. Even much of the year in FC Cincinnati last year, he was a man who came off the bench late in games. At the outside back position in this game, he finds himself the starter. Yule. Pridham. Stewart colliding in. Gray fell down. The question is whether or not they can recover. Win as it slid away from him. Rigi is an exciting player. I mean, he's showed a lot of attacking prowess, uh, linking up with Watson in the midfield. Watson, a good central defensive midfielder who sets up play for Rooney 
um, definitely needs to step up a little bit and, and show his worth a little bit more so that Phoenix could get more of an attacking um, flow going. Attack coming for Reno, and at the last moment, as that ball was reaching its final destination, it was curled off the side of the net. Up the line for Bravo. He's been able to hold up play. Here's Colby, his fifth start of the year. Another one of those Cal Poly guys. Set run through from Kelly. And that had to be perfect from Stewart, and it was right on the edge of the area. Such a dangerous player. He's so exciting to watch. I mean, his speed, his strength, I mean, he puts it all together. He gets a shot, he will capitalize. And his energy hasn't come down at all. It doesn't seem like he's going to slow down. I mean, in the next 30 minutes or so, you never know, but uh, he looks like he's going to play the full, full 90. Corner for Reno. That was a uh, ambitious effort. <laughs> you know, this is a Reno side that had six goals through six games coming in. Four of those were off-headed uh, efforts. And while both goals tonight have come from Dane Kelly's foot left and right respective, uh, Reno is a dangerous side on those set pieces when you have targets like they have. They get to use it to their advantage. I mean, the aerial strength that they have, I mean, they get to create a lot of crosses. And yet, I haven't seen them do a lot of crosses so far. Phoenix will be making a move. And there's Avila, his first appearance for Phoenix Rising. Coming on for Luke Rooney at the hour mark. for Phoenix Rising FC. Entering the match is number 30, Eric Avila. Interesting move, uh, taking Leaving out Rooney, uh, who is the attacking midfielder, the heart of the team. Uh, it must be fresh legs, uh, allowing Avila to come in and, and show his uh, energy. Interesting to see what's going to develop from this change. Yeah, he really has been buzzing in those first couple of seconds. He's showing all over the field. <laughs> Bravo looking to throw. Cross field pass a little bit too far that. Throw for Hoppano. Probably going to last for uh, Tampa Bay Rowdies. Played his college ball at UC Santa Barbara. 30 in red. Played through for Phoenix. And uh, that coming back for Cortez. It looks like Rigi's gonna tuck in the middle with Watson. And they're gonna push out Avila to the, to the far right-hand side. Cortez a bit unlucky there. Hey fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the United Soccer League. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. Maybe time to go to Phoenix Rising website and get that Drogba jersey you've been waiting for too. <laughs> he is not in the 18 tonight. He will be wearing that vaunted number 11 jersey, which means Chris Cortez is the unlucky man who switched from uh, nine, Bravo took it, to 11, Drogba took it, to number seven. I wonder if he had to pay for it. That's my question. Uh, I've heard of that before actually. Actually, I'll tell you a story. Freddie Adu, when he came into the league, he wanted number 11 from a Lesko Escondarian. And I've heard he had to pay him a substantial amount to get his number swapped. <laughs> so it happens. Do you think he wants that money back? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, I would I would concede. I mean, the air comes in, and yeah, I mean, that, sh that shouldn't be a problem. I I don't know. That that's one. That one's on the house. Yeah. <laughs> But I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of financial contract there. <laughs> I don't know. I'd get a selfie from Drogba and call it a win. <laughs> Towards Vila. Well, fans waiting for that moment where Phoenix can draw one closer. Reno. Has uh, taken the air out of the building a bit earlier than anticipated. Goals in the second and the sixth. Phoenix has had their chances. Gray. Out to Avila. And he thought maybe Gray was going to uh, combine with him there. Off the chest of Pridham. Kelly was moving forward. Pridham keeps the ball. And slid away by Gray. Becca. There he is. Fekka showing a lot of energy. He's an exciting player to watch. He is quick with the ball. Shows a lot of promise here on the from the flank. Uh, Reno has so many entertaining players. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, you have uh, the combination play between Fekka and uh, Haban on the right hand side. I mean, that really shows promise for crosses, like you mentioned before. They really have a lot of aerial pr proudness. So um, I, I see them during the week training for these type of plays. Uh, which reflect in these games. And then you got your Brown and your Kelly and your Pridham. It really yeah. is a very talented roster. Deep. Pridham was uh, the target. He may have been offside. It's irrelevant in the end. Question is whether or not Phoenix can make anything of it. Rigi for Cortez. Ball taken away from him. Clipped by Rigi. Cortez tried to back heel it. Rigi not giving any ground but ultimately grab the heel of Hapano, and it's a free kick to Reno. Talk about name dropping though. I mean, you were talking about Reno and their names. Talk about Phoenix and their names. <laughs> I just looked at, at the lineup here. I mean, you're talking about Sean Wright Phillips, Omar Bravo, Rooney, Cortez, Didier Drogba when he plays. I mean, let's not discount Rigi and, and Watson in the midfield. They have a very, very stellar lineup, uh, this Phoenix team. These are both teams that, that have the talent on them. And whether or not you get where you're looking to go this year with all the changes year over year is an entirely different argument. Right. But, uh, Reno's a team where maybe you don't expect a lot because they're an expansion team, but they have guys who have won in this league before and won, won significantly. That's That's incredibly important for, for a franchise. Uh, not only that, but going down the season, moving through these games, getting these reps in, getting that that uh, that team structure, uh, the camaraderie, down, I mean, everything's going to come into place at one point, and it's going to show into excellent soccer. It's going to be quality. Tack on here, and Fekka playing Kelly. He steps over, and he puts it in off the post. That is a hat trick in the 66th minute. 53 goals. What an exciting play by Kelly. What an exciting lead up by Reno. Incredible, incredible cut here. I mean, he took everyone out. I mean, what a final placement he made. He couldn't have hit it off the post any better. 3-0. I mean, this is going to be entertaining to see if Phoenix even has a chance to score a goal after this momentum from Reno. Is this a yellow card worthy uh, celebration? Nope, not in my opinion. <laughs> I used to do that all the time and never got a yellow for that. Well, Dan Kelly does get a yellow for it, but he'll take it to go with his three goals tonight. Has been issued by the referee. How about Dan Kelly? To wow, oh wow. Hat is he had a night. Second to sixth Dan and Kelly. 66th. What a finish. And Mike, the, the best part of that goal for me was the way he cut the ball. Not even the shot. Yep. Because we are expected a left-footed shot there. Everyone faked, obviously, everyone thought. But the fact that he cut the ball so well, that was great to watch. There's a chance for something special here. Deflects, and it comes Bersano. Crucial minutes of the game. We're going into the 70th. What changes do we make here on both ends? I mean, it's tough to see 
any changes going to be made other than a defensive one for Reno. They're probably going to rest some legs. Obviously, we have high temperature. We probably have exhaustion coming in in the next 5 to 10 minutes from some of the midfielder players. Maybe you rest some legs. Maybe you obviously give them a chance. Maybe you obviously give them a breather. Um, I, that's my route I would take for Reno. For Phoenix, I would say maybe more on the line of, of maybe... I mean, it's tough because they have such attacking talents that it's such tough to replace them other than, than, than being a little tired. Move towards Avila. He collects it again. Stewart. One would think if they go attacking substitution here, Mike Seth might be an option as Rigi stepping through. Cortez deflected into the air. And also at Jason Johnson, the Jamaican. Tremendous pace available off the bench as well. Bravo. Right, Phillips. Going right into Ian Russell's bench. Cortez lifted that off the defender. That's Morell. Referee ceding the throw now to Reno after a bit of a protest. There's Colby, Hawaiian, grew up in New Zealand. Called up uh, last year to the New Zealand national team uh, while he was with Sacramento Republic. Who won the Western Conference in the regular season. Papano towards Kelly, whips the ball ahead. And here comes Kelly. <laughs> Sometimes it's all going right, and then that happens. And that, that does happen often, actually. That type of whiff, I mean, I don't know how else to call it, but a whiff. He showed great promise there with the momentum leading up to, to the right foot, we're footed uh, lead up, but that left foot just gave up on him. Somewhere under there, there's probably a, a banana peel or something. <laughs> Rasa. Morell. Colby. Crossfield pass from LaGrasa. It was a little limp coming up from it. Ball played to the top of the area. One by Ramage. And back comes Phoenix. Over the top, Cortez, saved by Bersano. Taken by Wien. Hey fans, the USL, one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, featuring some of the game's top talents and rising stars. Stay up to date with all the latest league news and information visiting uslsoccer.com and follow them on Twitter at USL. If you follow at USL and you like the hashtag SCTop10, it's been a good month for you. <laughs> busy week, busy month. All dummied through. Flip throw-ins, bicycle kick goals. 30-yard <laughs> missiles. Goodness. And it's no wonder you hear every coach in this league comment that if you didn't get better in the offseason, you got worse because everyone else did. And this oh, yeah. league is taking steps and spades right now. Correct. Vila has the ball knocked away. And you feel like things are going well if you're Phoenix coming into the game. And then the expansion team without a win comes in, blows the doors off in the first 10 minutes. And... Uh, it's just another reminder. There are no free spaces on the checkerboard that is the USL schedule. AJ. 
We in. Up the wing, Pridham front running. Top of the area, and Fekka. Pridham shoulder to shoulder with Stewart. Clears it out in the 73rd. Reno's relentless. They're still creating opportunities. They're up 3-0 and they're still pressuring. I mean, I love that. I love to see that. I love the fact that they're not going to stop just because they're up 3-0. On comes Junior Burgos, native of El Salvador. And that's enough hat trick tonight for Dane Kelly. He comes off uh, goals 51, 52, and 53 of his tremendous United Soccer League career. And a reminder that he is just 26. On the other side, you see Jason Johnson, man out of VCU. Come on. E.J. Gray, the outside back comes off, and it appears that this is where the cards get played by the Phoenix coaching staff. Defensive move and attacking mood on Reno. Giving Kelly a rest, bringing in uh, Burgos, who is uh, a very skillful, uh, attack-minded player, uh, great with set pieces. Uh, so let's see what's in store for Reno for the last uh, 15 minutes or so. Turned over, and the foot race is on. Yellow card coming, Rigi against him, Fekka. Way it looked just like the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> yeah. Both quick, very quick. Off to the races. That's a tough call. I mean, uh, there, there was no in ill intention on, on Fekka there. I mean, it just happens to be speed and they collided, but there was an attacking play for Phoenix. So he deserves a yellow there, fortunately for him. Two of the smallest guys on the field. And Fekka is 5'5", five five and uh, they list Rigi at 5'4". Wow, that is, that is uh, small for soccer standards. 5'6 is typically the shortest you see. Well, Sean Wright Phillips is a 5'5", five 5'6 five, five, player, I think. As he just uh, floated that ball in. They, they call him 5'6". Yeah. I feel tall next to them, I'm 5'7". <laughs> or so I think. Don't tell me you use the elevator studs. <laughs> Ball finds Cohen. Mike Watson, Albert Munoz, former MLS player. Well, he is, I'm not. <laughs> Watson dancing by Burgos. No quitting them. Get the ball taken away. Here's Burgos. Started last time out. This is his second time off the bench. Played in all games but one so far for Reno. Sliding in. It's uh, Matt Watson. Taking his fifth start is uh, Phoenix. Still some games in hand. Reno can climb within one point of them if they can hold on and grab three points tonight. Fekka pushing in on Watson. And Fekka playing top of the box. We in 4 0 to Reno in the 77th minute. And we in as his first professional goal. And it doesn't stop for Reno. <laughs> they just keep on coming, creating opportunities. And this is the, the result of their hardworking and disciplined play. So much talent, so much creativity on their end that they just continue to have these opportunities lead up. Uh, excellent finish. I mean, he had a lot of pressure from his defenders coming in, and uh, even Cohen had a touch on it. But excellent finish, 4-0. We can't ask for more for for Reno. Well, you were part of MLS when it started. You saw every team gradually get their first win as an expansion franchise. What's it like when that moment comes to you? Because for Reno. This is now five games in the works, now a sixth. And they look close as that ball bounds through and results in a corner. Looks like Reno finally is going to have that magic moment. 
Well, it's going to be overwhelming for them. I mean, they're going to ride on that, that wave. I mean, it's going to be momentum for them. It's going to allow them to really, you know, catapult themselves to, to get confidence. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. You, once you get the confidence going and you get the juices going, every, everything comes into place for a team. So it's so important to get that first goal, uh, the first win. Um, it's going to be ever-changing for them for the rest of the season. Right, Phillips allows Vila to take it. Burgos able to keep the ball. Now he's one on one with Vasquez lobs from distance. Boy, if he had put that on target, he would have scored it. I would have done the same thing. He had two players to pass the ball to, but you know what? It's 4 0. Almost end of the game. I have the chance. I have the run. I have the momentum. Let's go ahead and take the shot. Because if I get to score this goal, it's a highlight goal. <laughs> Where's David Villa when you need him? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Steven Dos Santos did it as well. Johnson. Trying to cut that across the grain. Rigi. Rounded out by Morel. Ball uh, appeared to get out on the far touchline. And substitution now for Phoenix as they make their third and final sub. And on comes Mike Seth, who started the opener against Toronto and went 62 minutes, but has not played since. Comes on for Chris Cortez, who again is dangerous, but this time does not find a goal. I applaud Cortez. I mean, even though his team's down, he did put a max effort. He did create a lot of opportunities. He took a lot of his shots. He held the ball well, which I like about him. He uses his strengths. Obviously, he's a tall, um, strong player. Um, but it, obviously, he needs some rest tonight. He's not going to be able to accomplish much else tonight. Ramage here to get the defender there. Ball then defender, defender and the ball there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is about the moment where things changed last week between Swope Park and Phoenix, and ultimately Swope Park grabbed three back, but Phoenix's 4-0 lead was enough to hang on. Unclear if that spark will come for Phoenix before we're done. Bravo, trying to get that second ball in. A little bit of a frustrating night for Omar, Omar Bravo. Um, hasn't really been able to connect well. I mean, he his touches have been on, but he hasn't been able to you know create any shots for himself. Uh, we we need him to really you know take action and try to capitalize on shots to score. Um, he does know how to create well. He obviously knows how to score, but um, I'd say overall tonight he's had a bit of a quiet night. Burgos. Down by Vasquez, and that may be a bit of frustration, although I don't think Vasquez meant to do it all that much at either. Players colliding. Pridham gets the ball. Slid it back. Cleared by Phoenix Rising. Seth on the back of Morell. Pridham pointing forward. He's in an offside position, and so back it goes for him. Fecca. And now Lagrassa. This is what it needs to do. I mean, you have less than nine minutes left. You want to make sure that you're holding the ball. Burgos is a key player when it comes to this. He's essentially a ball handler. He knows how to keep the momentum going, but possession. Possession is going to be key for Reno for the last few minutes. Morel. Burgos. El Salvadoran off 
left of the corner here, still with eight minutes to go. Wins the throw for Reno. Didier Drogba not in the 18 tonight. The uh, superstar from uh, several major clubs in Europe. Chelsea, perhaps most notable, Galatasaray as well, and Turkey stands out. He uh, will look to debut next time out at home against Oklahoma City in a couple weeks' time. But for Reno, they struck quickly. They struck with intensity. Three goals from the same man, Dane Kelly. And it looks like they've struck for their first win in the United Soccer League. The last in the league this year for that. I'm not sure it'll get any better for any fan base than it's about to be for Reno in this moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the attendance for tonight's game is 6,067. Phoenix Rising FC and Reno. Just shy of a sellout being announced. Thank you for attending. For tonight's attendance. Drogba likely set to debut in that OKC game. We can expect uh, 7,000 or so again. As Reno will go back to their bench and we think back to how this game developed. Dane Kelly, the all-time leading goal scorer in the USL. Three different ways of scoring here. Oh, and he showed his class. I mean, first goal with the right foot, penetrating shot deep down, left-footed shot, second goal, same style of a goal. And then the Enter third the one, match. you have a Number class 11. cut Animal and then a placement in the post. I mean, you can't ask for anything more Leaving from your striker. Two, Goals in the second, sixth, and 66th minute. Dane Kelly, a shocked silence at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex when he had that second. Anibal Echeverria has come on in his third substitute appearance, native of Reno. Jackson Ewell, the player who uh, came off. About five minutes to play in regulation. Reno's gonna look to possess the ball now. Uh, look for Burgos, who's fresh. He has the ball now. He's essentially going to try to hold the ball, create maybe a set piece or two, maybe get a free kick, get some reps in. Uh, but uh, look to him to hold the ball up top while we draw draw uh, draw the clock here in the last five minutes. There he is against Rigi. And now he cuts along the end line. Vasquez. Away from Johnson, uh, trying to connect with Seth. Flag. There it is. Ramage uh, willing the call. Britham uh, offside. Avila goes back. Phoenix Rising returns home on the 13th to take on Oklahoma City Energy. They're scuffling a bit. Then it's off to take on San Antonio on the road on the 20th of May. Team with seven wins and a draw through eight games. The class of the Western Conference at this stage of the game. Look at Toyota in Texas. Tack coming on for Reno, broken up by Johnson. Excellent touch there by Manfeka. Um, quality player, I mean, he, he really knows how to open the ball. He sees, he has vision. Uh, he's, been, he's been commanding the, the midfielder for Reno in the last uh, half. It's interesting to me because he's, what, five foot five is how he's listed. And he doesn't seem to make uh, all that many attacking plays. And he drew your eye pretty early in this game. Have you heard of Xavi from Spain? <laughs> yes. 
exactly the same style player. He's the guy that he's 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, he doesn't need size in the style of his play, but he creates continuity. He's obviously getting the momentum going from the onset in the midfielder. So he doesn't need to go up. He doesn't need to you know spray any long balls. He's as long as possessing the ball in the midfield, not losing it, and then playing it to his created player. He's doing his job well done. That is like the highest possible compliment. Yeah, I I, I really like his style. I mean he's he's. He's uh, comfortable with the ball in any situation under pressure. Um, I haven't seen him lose a ball uh, since. Burgos has Pridham running down the center. Burgos fired it right to Cohen. And Pridham, arms go up. There's some frustration there from the uh, reserve striker. It's a tight <laughs> score. <laughs> <laughs> he really needed that ball to be crossed into him. But I see. I understand Burgos. I mean, he saw he saw a chance. He has you know confidence in his right foot. So, I mean, he went for it. <laughs> Watson comes back towards Bravo. Player down for Reno in the middle of the box. Belongs to Phoenix. Helping up the captain, Oxford. Flag is up offside, whistled against the Phoenix Rising during the final minute of the 90. is finally a side that will be able to claim victory in the United Soccer League. The fan base in Reno has been outstanding in these opening weeks, and they've been quite unlucky to not come away with a win. Tonight they do it in convincing fashion, and when you build a franchise from scratch, Dane Kelly is kind of the guy that you're looking for, the guy who coaches, the guy who, who scores finishes they aren't easy to come by reno got them and uh, he gave reno their first win nearly single-handedly in those first 10 minutes yeah, he's a difference maker i mean he's the type of player you want to create a, a core around uh he brings such experience and, and just a reflection of the score today i mean it's all him it's it's obviously his leadership and his and his energetic uh scoring proudness so good for reno i mean acquisition wise i mean incredible Couple minutes of added time as a Dane Kelly getting a well deserved blow at the end of the game. As for Phoenix coming off the bye week, a disappointing performance. Just a couple of turnovers turned the whole game on its head in the opening five minutes, and they never could quite recover their first game without Frank Yollop at the helm. Obviously, all the best to Frank, leaving for all the right reasons. Speaking over this past week with Rick Schantz, says he's been talking with him since he did indeed resign back on April 24th. This fan base a bit shocked by the fact that Frank Yallop stepped away, but uh, it, it was the right time for him to do so. A couple wins in a row, the right time for his family. He had been commuting from California for the better part of 18 months, and everybody around the franchise, from ownership through the players, have acknowledged just how uh, just how important he was to building this roster, building this club. And all our best to Frank, who uh, as broadcasters made our lives quite easy <laughs> in covering this uh, franchise over the last couple of years. Yeah, he has so much experience. I mean, I, I remember him uh, many years ago. He's always been present in the leagues. Um, and his influence, his experience that he brought to, to the franchise, he will be missed. Um, but like everything else, there's a new beginning. There's a new opportunity to, to continuously improve. Um, so as Phoenix shows here, I mean, they, they have a deficit today most likely. But um, overall, their team, their quality of players, I mean, the franchise, it's, it's ever growing. Stewart races forward. Final seconds of stoppage time. Well, this is a moment for Reno they will not soon forget. Oh. 
Perhaps the weight makes it all the sweeter. Full time, Reno has won for the first time in the United Soccer League. And it's a shocking Reno. win, Reno. only in the fact that it fell over after just 10 minutes. That man, Dane Kelly, three goals, second, sixth, and 66th, and the class of the United Soccer League among goal scorers showed it tonight, didn't he, Albert? Oh, yeah. It was uh, glorious to watch. I mean, as a, as a former soccer player, I mean, you you constantly want to have these opportunities to watch these type of players show their promise, show their work, and it's beautiful to watch. Off the post in the 66th, all the poise. We look back at the highlights from this one when we return. Final score, 4-0. This is Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. La familia Heineken ha dejado un legado especial, una receta original con solo tres ingredientes y todos naturales. Yo también tengo un don especial. La habilidad de llorar cuando se necesite. Bonita, ¿no? Solo tres ingredientes naturales. There's more behind the star. Phoenix Rising Football Club trae el más alto nivel de fútbol soccer profesional a Arizona. Y ahora el legendario delantero del Chelsea y Costa de Marfil, Didier son más alto. Pero el nuevo estadio de fútbol de Phoenix Rising se llena en cada juego. Phoenix Rising Football Club contra OKC Energy Football Club, sábado 13 de mayo, 7.30 p.m. En vivo en Your View, Arizona. Phoenix Rising Football Club, un mundo de poder y pasión. Rising como uno solo. In front of over uh, 6,000 you know in Phoenix, uh, Reno you know picks up their first franchise victory over Phoenix Rising. Dane Kelly scores a hat trick. It's a 4-0 win for the roadside as they join uh, the land of three points for the first time uh, as a USL franchise. Mike Watts back with Albert Munoz. And Albert, from the outset, as we look back at the full-time highlights, Reno jumped in front and they never looked back. Goals in the second and the sixth. Different feet, same shot. Dane <laughs> Kelly ran away with it. Yeah, as we see here, developing play in the first minutes of the game. Beautifully stricken ball by Dane Kelly, as you mentioned. Uh, started the night really well. Um, you couldn't ask more for your striker to score. Not with your right, not only with your right, but not only with your left. But again, with his right in the final minutes of the second half. Um, left footed strike, beautifully stricken, as we see here, down though, excellent shot. This in the sixth minute, the assist from Brown, and it was 2-0 in favor of the roadside. A couple good saves from Josh Cohen in this game, a couple good opportunities for Phoenix. They had a chance to get one back and it could have changed the whole game, but ultimately, Reno, equal chances to make it 3-0 in the first half. Yeah, Phoenix reacted well. They had a couple opportunities. I mean, unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize. Um, it wasn't their night. I mean, uh, Reno, Reno really did take, take advantage and, and cement themselves in the game. Um, it didn't give Phoenix a chance to really uh, focus on scoring. Um, they just wanted to keep possession and hopefully not get scored on. Um, but as we see here, the chances that we had, obviously great defensive work from several players like Stewart. Um, but ultimately, the game was one-sided. Uh, Reno did excellent to capitalize on their opportunities. And again, the third goal of the night, beautiful stricken hat trick uh, by Mr. Kelly here. Dane Kelly, number 53, in his 53rd career USL goal, still top of the charts. And uh, the 26-year-old doesn't seem to be going anywhere. A yellow card-worthy celebration? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't say so. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> <laughs> all, but he's all smiles. All smiles. And then uh, the opportunity for Chris Weehan, his first professional goal in the 77th. And it ends four goals to nil in favor of Reno. Full-time uh, statistics from this one. And how about the shots on target, 10 to 2?
Oh, yeah. I mean, the quality over quantity here. I mean, 50-50 possession, 12 shots against 9. But overall, 4 against 0, you can't you can't beat that. Uh, Reno really showed their quality of play. Their, their possession work um, was excellent. Phoenix really did attempt to really increase their possession over the game. Uh, but ultimately, they came up a little short. Some disappointment for this Phoenix side. And Jose Bosch caught up with Peter Ramage after the affair. The captain... The leader of the back line sees his team give up four goals. He stands by with Jose. Thanks, guys. We're here with uh, Peter Ramage and uh, Rambo. Obviously not the result you guys wanted. What was Reno doing out there that uh, allowed him to get those four goals? We just didn't get going from start to finish. We were poor all over the park. Uh, the intensity that we showed against Swope just wasn't there. Um, sloppy goals we gave away, you know, at the start of the game, 2-0 down after what five, eight minutes or something like that, gave us a mountain to climb and we gave it a goal. Uh, you know, and I think the goals in the second half came from us again, probably giving the ball away, it was our own mistakes, which is more disappointing than anything else. Um, but you know, we've, it's maybe a reality check that we might we need. Uh, you know, we've had two great victories previous to this. Uh, you know, we've not got to get ahead of ourselves. We're still a young group uh, in terms of coming together. Um, still got a lot of hard work to go, but it's a long season. You know, it's only the fifth game, uh, and we'll get back on the training pitch tomorrow probably, and we'll uh, we'll try and put what we've done wrong today right. And what can you say? The crowd, your supporters group, uh, still listen, dancing and chanting. We've uh, we've let them down more than anybody tonight. Um, you know, again, over six thousand, whatever it was here tonight, and they were magnificent. They stuck with us through through a horrible night for them. Um, and you know, we really, really appreciate that. And we're going to need them more than ever in the coming weeks um, as we, you know, fight back from this defeat. Um, but like I said, we've let them down more than anybody, and Rick as well. We've let him down tonight, you know, coming in and taking charge. So we apologise to, to the fans, we apologise to Rick, but we, you know, we'll, we'll stick together and we'll go again tomorrow. All right, thank you very much, Randall. No worries, Jose. And back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Jose. Albert, thoughts? Well, a quick recap. I mean, excellent showing by Mr. Dane Kelly. He really, really took possession of this entire game, put the momentum right for Reno from the onset, um, and they capitalized on their opportunities. Second minute, sixth minute, 66th. First hat trick for Reno, first win for Reno as we in scores in the 77th. For Tom Piero, Alex Goldstein, Albert Munoz, and Jose Bosch. Mike Watts saying so long, Reno, the winner tonight, 4 0. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent from the United Soccer League.